The Colorado River is known as one of the most spectacular rivers in the United States of America. It is a valuable source for drinking water and other needs of people and provides water to more than 40 million people. But today, the river and the people who depend on it are in big trouble. Hydrologists, as well as climatologists at the University of Colorado, USA, claim that compared to the last century, the flow of the river has decreased by 20%. In the course of the work, scientists modeled the future changes of the Colorado Basin and found that if nothing is done, the annual amount of water in the river will be reduced by 11%. Simulations have also shown that Colorado is likely to dry out completely in the future. This will affect the lives of all those 40 million Americans who live from Denver to Los Angeles. Agricultural land in the southwest of the country will also be affected. This crisis state of the Colorado River in the United States affects seven states and part of Mexico. Why is this happening and who is to blame for it? From its source, high in the Rocky Mountains, the Colorado River flows south for almost 1,500 miles, through waterfalls, through deserts and canyons, to the lush wetlands of a vast delta in Mexico and into the Gulf of California. The enormous significance of the Colorado River extends far beyond the American West. In addition to providing water to the populations of seven states, 29 federally recognized tribes and northern Mexico, its water is used to grow everything from carrots stacked on supermarket shelves in New Jersey to beef and a hamburger served at a Massachusetts diner. The energy generated by the two largest dams, Hoover and Glen Canyon, is sold through a power grid that stretches from Arizona to Wyoming. Beginning in the 1920s, western states began to share Colorado's water, build dams, and divert the flow hundreds of miles to Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, and other fast-growing cities. The federal government had to intervene as initially the states could not agree on how to distribute the waters of the Colorado River Basin among themselves. Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover proposed dividing the river into two basins, upper and lower, and each received the right to develop and use 7.5 million acre-feet of river water annually. This approach helped to reserve water for the future development of the upper basin and allowed the planning and development of the lower basin to continue. The original multi-state treaty governing the use of Colorado was signed in 1922. The treaty required the states of the river's upper basin, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and New Mexico, to keep a certain amount of water in the river so that the flow would reach the states in the lower basin, including Arizona, California, and Nevada. In 1944, this treaty was amended to allow river water to also flow to Mexico. The treaty gave Mexico the right to 1.5 million acre-feet per year. But the deal initially contained a fatal flaw. Fixed numbers were set when climate change was not a concern. Indeed, in those years, no one could have imagined that the needs of people would grow so much and the water level in the river would drop so much as a result of climate change that compliance with the treaty would become difficult. The damming and diversion of Colorado, the seventh longest river in the country, was hailed by many as a triumph of engineering, but some considered it a crime against nature. The second opinion, unfortunately, was confirmed by obvious ominous signs. Over the past decade, the water level in the river has been especially low as drought gripped the southwest. The river still flows through the Grand Canyon, much to the delight of rafters and other tourists and boaters are still roaring across the 110-mile Lake Mead in Nevada and Arizona formed by the Hoover Dam. But at the edge of the lake, they can see lines in the stone walls, as distinct as rings in a tub, showing that the water level has gotten much lower, approximately 130 feet higher than the year 2000 level. Since the turn of the millennium, experts in the American West have been predicting that unless constant overuse of water is brought under control, the Colorado River will no longer be able to provide for all the 40 million people who depend on it. Over the past two decades, Western states have taken incremental steps to conserve water, signing agreements to share what's left. And then, like Las Vegas, they did everything they could to protect themselves. But they believe that the turning point was still far away. However, as a result of record heat waves and relentless megafires, the Colorado River is dropping faster than expected. 
In 2021, even though rainfall and snow cover in the Rocky Mountains were near normal levels, parched soils and heat-affected plants have absorbed most of the water. The inflow of water into Lake Powell, for example, was about one-fourth of the usual volume. Water levels in Colorado have already fallen on average by nearly 20% from levels in the 1900s. And if current rates of warming continue, losses could be as high as 50% by the end of this century. In August 2021, for the first time, federal authorities announced an emergency water shortage in the Colorado River. The announcement of water shortages forced shortage of supplies to certain states. They began with a sharp cut in almost a fifth of the river's water supply to Arizona, as well as modest cuts for Nevada and Mexico. This was followed by new negotiations and reductions. All of this has come as a wake-up call. One of the country's most important sources of fresh water has fallen victim to the accelerating climate crisis. Americans face tough choices about how and where to live as the climate continues to heat up. States will be forced to decide what to do in those parts of the country that are losing their main water supply. It is here that Lake Powell and Mead appear. The two largest reservoirs in the United States are filled with water from the Colorado River. By 2022, each had reached its lowest level on record, forcing the federal government to take emergency action for the first time. The U.S. Department of the Interior reduced water use in the lower basin and diverted more water downstream from reservoirs in the upper basin. Lake Powell is the reservoir in which the states of the upper basin store water, which they divert downstream into the lower basin. According to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, it is unlikely that Lake Powell will be filled with significant amounts of water in the next two years. If this trend continues for a few more years, the drop in reservoir levels could lead to an official water shortage. In 1922, conservationist Aldo Leopold canoed across a large delta at the mouth of the Colorado River. He wrote about the richness of birds and fish and the calm waters of a deep emerald hue. In Leopold's time, the delta extended over almost 3,000 square miles. Nowadays, it covers less than 250, and the only water flowing here except for heavy rains is runoff from alfalfa, lettuce, melon fields, as well as pecan orchards. This tragedy is the result of the thoughtless activity of mankind. The Colorado River is the perfect symbol of what happens when we demand too much from a limited resource. It disappears.